Hi everybody. Welcome back to part two of Native American Indian Artifacts, the Malala Tribe of Oregon. In this video, we will be discussing in further detail the artifacts that were found on the property that I am living on. And upon further research, they were left by the Malala Indians. If you have missed the history of the Malala Indians, please watch part one of this video. As stated in the previous videos, while I was out on a hike, I had found a couple Native American artifacts. Before we get started going into further detail about the artifacts that were found on this property, I wanted to give a few examples of mortars and pestles that have been found from other tribes or previous indigenous people. As you can see, there's several different sizes. The first example, they're pretty small. The second example gets a little bit bigger. The third example is a very large one. There was a piece that was found that strongly resembles this particular piece on this property. And then this last example is just a large boulder. And you, a lot of people have found these, but people have come across them hiking, fishing, out in the woods. This first mortar that I found out on my hike was actually broken in several pieces. The other few pieces were on the ground covered with snow. I didn't dig them up. This one was hard enough to get up. It's actually a very large piece. You can't tell by the picture, but it was pretty heavy. I could barely pick it up to move it to where it was, and that was just one piece of it. And if you look real closely, you can tell where it has been smoothed out in the middle and, and rounded. And you can actually see, if you look, where the other pieces might have been placed to make this a whole piece. This next collection was found by the owner of the property. He's lived on this property for a little over 20 years. And when he first got the property, there was a lot of clearing to build his house and a lot of other things and this was when he discovered a lot of these artifacts and in fact this whole valley where he is living is riddled with Native American artifacts it was a real hot spot meeting place gathering place hunting grounds they utilized this area quite a bit this first mortar and pestle is actually quite large as you can tell it's got two mortars and two pestles. This actually remains exactly where it was found. This was found in what is now his front yard on the property when he first moved here a little over 20 years ago. This next piece is one of the pieces that the owner of the property took to the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde. He was told that it is a war paint rock and obviously what it was used for was to grind up pigments to be used in war paint and they would actually use this rock to make their paints and then dip their brushes, fingers, whatever they used in the different colored holes to apply their war paint. The owner of the property was so impressed by this piece and especially once he found out what it was for. He was hoping when he took these pieces to the Confederated Tribes that there was a museum somewhere that these pieces could be shown in. They were beautiful pieces and he has a lot of respect for the people that made them. So he wanted them to be shown. He wanted their work to be shown. Since the Confederated Tribes told him that they would not display these pieces in any museum and in fact they would be cataloged and packed away and probably nobody would ever see them, this was very distressing to the owner of the property. He felt their work was so important and that people needed to see it. He didn't want these items locked away. He instead opted to bring them back to the property and put them back where they were found on the property. And like I said before, I respect that decision. The last item in this collection is really quite unique. It's normally stored where he's got it for display in his yard upside down. It was not found far from where it is actually displayed. This bowl-shaped mortar is made out of black cinder rock and it's been hollowed out in the middle. Really a very impressive piece. 
the pestle belonging to this mortar was not found. Let's go ahead and take a look at some still shots I took that will show a little more detail of these pieces. a little bit about the stone pestle that was gifted to me. This pestle was gifted to me by somebody that lives on the property and I graciously accepted. It was an amazing gift. This is the only artifact that I have kept that was found on this property. Here's the cool thing about this stone. This is the one that was gifted to me, as you can see right in here, is where there's still some of the red cinder rock. Because it would be held like this and used like this in a bowl. But if you look carefully, there's actually ridges right in here where my fingers fit. My fingers fit perfectly in this thing. But, uh, that was it. And it only really fits one way, like that doesn't feel right. It just, it doesn't, it only fits one when it gets right there. It's where all all the ridges line up so you can tell this was actually used so that was my gifted stone I love it this next mortar is actually very large it too remains where it was found on the property as you can tell, it's got one hole in the middle. One edge is actually quite unique. It's actually been tooled in a type of semicircle fashion, and I'm not quite sure what the purpose for that was. This last mortar I found underneath a rhododendron bush here on the property. As you can see, it's got a pretty shallow mortar on the top. But then down along the side, it's got this hole. I'm assuming something like this would be used to sharpen arrows, spears, that type of thing. I don't know. I could be wrong. And then lastly, before I let you go, I just wanted to mention that also on this property, there is a ton of petrified wood. Some of this wood has been tooled by some of the Native Americans. Um, there was a mortar made out of one um, that I don't have. The owner of the property actually has it. I don't have access to that today. The more special pieces, the smaller pieces that people are more inclined to walk off with are kept in his house. Anyway, as you can see, this is a fascinating property that I am living on in Oregon. I hope that you have enjoyed the pictures of all the artifacts. 
and I really hope that anybody watching this video has also watched the first video and learned the history of the people that actually made these artifacts. I think personally that that is extremely important for people to know if they're going to be viewing artifacts from people that were made a long time ago. Thank you very much for watching this video. I will post more videos in the future if I find any more artifacts. Bye.